is eternal life. You got to repent of all your sins. And lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people said amen. Matthew chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16 and verses 17 and 18. If we have it, can we say amen? And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. From these passages of scripture I want to present to you this afternoon my, my theme just very briefly. What kind of church is this? What kind of church is this I don't typically take subtopics but if I took a subtopic today I would say give them Jesus amen give them Jesus kind father in Jesus name we thank you oh God for this day that you have made we rejoice and we are glad in it Lord we thank you for life for health and for strength thank you for food for shelter for clothing oh God thank you for rightness of mind we thank you oh God for those of us that are gathered here in your house on today. Oh God, we pray that you would send a word right now. Uh, send that anointing, oh God, that makes preaching easy. Uh, send a word right now that will set your people free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Send that word, oh God, that will minister to the broken. That will give hope to the hopeless. That will encourage the discouraged. That will lift up the despondent. That will dry tears from someone's sad eyes. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, throw your weight around and show the devil who's boss. Have your way in this place. Stir us up right now when the Holy Ghost. Don't let us leave the same way that we came, oh God. But let us leave with more power. Let us leave, oh God, with more authority. Let us leave, oh God, with a, a stronger conviction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Save those that need to be saved. Loose the bound God and set the captive free. And free that man and free that woman. Free that boy and free that girl right now in the name of Jesus. We'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that you deserve. Anoint these lips of clay. Let your word be touted throughout this congregation in Jesus' name. Come on, put those hands together and say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What kind of church is this? Amen. I believe that, that, that uh, God impressed upon my heart today to uh, present his word this afternoon in the form of a question. Uh, what kind of church is this? Uh, because the, the church is uh, not the building. Amen. There are many buildings. Uh, even throughout the city of Bay City, there are many uh, churches, church buildings, uh, but very few churches that are actually God's church. Amen. The church is not the building. The church, uh, Brother Blaine, is, is, is not the sign out front. That doesn't make the church the church. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Amen. The church is not the church because of the incorporation papers that have identified the name of the church, identified the purpose of the church, the articles of incorporation, how the church operates, the structure of the church, and how the church is to be operated from a financial perspective. 
Those things are not the church. The building, as a matter of fact, uh, is, is really an assist to the church. The church building, the building is there so that the church can accomplish its mission. I want you to know this afternoon that uh, when we say, when we ask, what kind of church is this? That is a question that you and I must answer even in among ourselves. When we talk about the church, we're not talking about the building. We're not talking about, uh, praise God, the, the pews. We're not talking about, thank God, the musical instruments. But when we are talking about the church, we are talking about the people. We are referencing those of us that have been called out of darkness, that have been placed into this marvelous light. And so when we ask the question, what kind of church is this? It should cause us to look at ourselves and say, what kind of church will I be? Amen. I want you to know this afternoon, it is an imperative question. It is a necessary question because as we go through the course of our lives, you and I will be the only church that some people will ever come in contact with. Can I get a witness in this church today? Amen. You and I will be the first experience, if you will, that an individual has with the church of Jesus Christ. Because if you notice in the book of Acts that we just read, amen, there was a man, a lame man, that and I took particular note of the fact that he was laid daily at the gate of the temple. Amen. It should have been, he should have been brought into the church. Amen. Because that's where his deliverance was. Amen. But I'm so glad that even though they didn't bring him into the church, that somebody from the church had a mind to go where he was. Amen. And it is a sad commentary, thank God, to be close to the church in proximity, to be close to the building in proximity, but the actual church itself never goes and meets you where you are. It is a sad commentary to be just so close, but yet so far. Can I get a witness in this church today? Amen. And you and I can, can, can reflect back, thank God, even in our, on our own lives, where we may have desired to have a closer walk with Jesus. We may have desired to want to turn our lives all around may have had a desire, may have had an unction, may have come to the realization one day, as some people say, I, I had an epiphany. They may have had come to an epiphany one day that their lives were not satisfying and pleasing to God. And so they had a desire to, to turn their lives all around. Amen. But you came to the understanding that no matter how hard you try. No matter how diligently you try, you could not change your life in and in and of yourself. You couldn't do it all by yourself. Oh yeah, you tried to, to give up smoking. And you may have been successful, thank God, for day one. May have been successful day two. May have been successful, thank God, day five. But as soon as a stressful situation came on you, what did you say? I just got to have a cigarette. Amen. But it wasn't until you came in contact with the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. That you no longer had to rely on willpower. You can rely now on the Holy Ghost power. Can I get a witness in this church today? Anybody been delivered for something? Amen. I want you to know this afternoon that, that your deliverance is in the church. Amen. Not just in the building, but your deliverance is among those who have been called out of darkness and brought into this marvelous light. That's because that's where God's spirit dwells. Can I get a witness in this church today? 
Amen. That's where his presence dwells. And the Bible lets me know that, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. Amen. There the spirit of the Lord is. That's where your freedom is. Amen. You may have come to church bound today. But I want to let you know that now that you are in the church, this is where your deliverance is. Can I get a witness in this church today? This is where your freedom is. Because I heard Jesus say, he who the Son hath made free is free indeed. Amen. I want to let you know this afternoon that, that when you experience the freedom of Jesus Christ, that is a freedom that is permanent. Amen. That means that, that when God sets you free, that you don't have to be bound again. Can I get a witness in here? When God sets you free, amen, he sets you free never to be bound again. Amen. He not only sets you free in habit, he not only sets you free in behavior, but he sets your mind free. Can I get a witness in this church today? Amen. He, he looses the chains of darkness that had your mind bound. Many people are bound in behavior because they are bound in their mind. Amen. Many people have, have chains and, and they are arrested, thank God, by their habits. Thank God and arrested by their environment because they are still bound in their mind. But I want to let you know today that God not only changes your environment, God not only changes your behavior, but he will set you free even in your mind. Can I get a witness in this church this afternoon? You ought to clap your hands and tell God thank you. Tell him thank you another time. Amen. He will set your mind free. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. And that's the purpose of the church. Amen. I want to let you know this afternoon that, that the church has a multiplicity of purposes. Thank God chiefly among them. Thank God the church is the place where souls are saved. Amen. The church is the place where God changes lives of people. Thank God. That's why as I said in Sunday school uh, on last week, and I said it in Sunday school even yet on today, amen, I don't argue with people about the Bible. Amen. I've come to learn in my 20 plus years of, of being saved. Thank God in my almost 20 years of preaching this great gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've come to find out, amen, that people will believe whatever it is they want to believe. Amen. And there's no sense in debating the scriptures because folk going to do what they want to do. Amen. I've never, amen, won anybody to Christ debating the merits of scripture. Amen. But I have won somebody to Christ when I told my testimony. Can I get a witness in here? Because you can argue scripture. You can try to argue if you want to. But one thing that does not come under dispute and that is the power of your testimony and the power of your story. Amen. To tell somebody that I was on drugs until I met Jesus, you can't argue with that. Amen. To tell them I tried to do it myself, but it wasn't until I met Jesus that he took the taste of liquor off of my lips. That was nobody but Jesus. Amen. That wasn't me. It was nobody but Jesus. You can't argue with that. Amen. And the, play, the church is the place where souls are saved. Amen. The place, thank God, where you can come in. Thank God, just as you are, you can come in. And by that, thank God, I mean you can come in. Praise God, burdened down and depressed. You can come in, praise God, on the verge of suicide. You can come in, praise God, with your mind all messed up. Amen. You can come in with the weight of of the world on your shoulder come in praise God lost and confused trying to get your life together but don't know which direction to turn you can come in with your life all messed up searching for answers and looking for a way out I want to let you know that the church is the place for you can I get a witness in this church today 
Amen. The church, amen, is the place, thank God, where your soul can be saved. Amen. We are not promising, thank God, riches untold. Amen. Because riches is not a reflection of your godliness. Amen. In your good character. Amen. Riches does not suggest that you are what God wants you to be. Amen. Because I know plenty of rich folk. Amen. That are, uh, amen, that are lost and on their way to a devil's hell. Amen. Riches is not a sign that, that you are in the will of God. Amen. And that we're not promising money. We're not promising even a smooth life. Amen. But we are promising. Amen. That power. Thank God that will help you go through. Thank God the trouble that everybody goes through. Can I get a witness in this church today? Amen. The difference between those that are saved and those that are not saved. Amen. Is those that are not saved go through trouble. Amen. And they have no outlet. They have no recourse. Amen. They have no relief. And so they turn thank God to, to alcohol. Amen. To try to cope with the trouble that, that they're encountering. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. They, they, they resort to, to destructive habits. Thank God that, amen, they try and come to turn with the trouble that they are experiencing. Thank God in their life. Amen. Talking to my wife. Amen. She's had all kinds of experience. Thank God with teenagers, with children. Amen. Who just are going through hell. Amen. And the cope with it. They don't know what else to do. And so they take a knife or they take scissors or they take whatever they can get their hands on and start cutting themselves. Amen. They don't know why they're doing it. Amen. They don't, they can't explain to you. Amen. But they do it to try and cope with the trouble that they are going through. Some of them want to hurt themselves. Amen. Some of them, thank God, want to kill themselves. That's what you go through. Amen. When you go through life without the power of the Holy Ghost, I want to let you know today, amen, because you are saved doesn't mean that you won't go through trouble. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> amen. That's why Job said that man that is born of woman is full of days, is few of days, and full of trouble. Oh, yeah, you will go through some stuff. Amen. But you ought to be encouraged this afternoon that if you are in the church, amen, the stuff that you go through, it will not consume you because you are the church and God has promised us and upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Amen. Because you are in the church, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come on, clap your hand and tell God, thank you. Tell him thank you another time. Amen. That's what happens when you have the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost that is in the church is in the church to be in you. Can I get a witness in here? I want to let you know. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost today, if you have not been born again, you are living beneath your privilege. You are living a life that God did not design for you to live. You are going through trouble that you don't have to go through. Can I get a witness in this church? If you are living without the Holy Ghost, you are putting up with stuff you don't have to put up with. You are fighting battles that you don't have to fight. If you are living without the Holy Ghost, you are struggling with stuff that you don't have to struggle with because I heard what Jesus said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you I come to let you know if you don't have the Holy Ghost it is here for you this afternoon no help up in here. I come to let you know you are in the right place. Can I get a witness in this church? You are at the right time. Today is your day. Clap your hand and shout glory. 
shout glory another time the church the church it is the place take your seat for a second I'm almost finished it is the place praise God of salvation oh when I say the church I'm talking about the people amen the gathering of the believers the gathering of the called out ones amen we have the Holy Ghost and we will help you get it too can I get a witness in here as a matter of fact we ain't had church until somebody's life is turned around y'all don't hear me this afternoon I think we're too accustomed to just coming to church to just coming to church and doing what we do you know hey man we'll come to church hey God throughout the week and come on Sunday morning you know because it's routine routine can I get a witness in here it's become routine it's just something that we do and we get too accustomed to that I want you to know today when we come to church we ain't had church until somebody's life is turned around can I get a witness in here we ain't had church until some sinner walks in and falls down under the power of God I want you to know today God is here but they will not feel his power until you the church start operating under his power what does that mean preacher you have got to create the atmosphere in which God will move God will not move unless you move can I get a witness in here I don't come to church to be a spectator I come to be a participant can I get a witness in here I don't come to church to watch God move I come to church to make God move I come to church to be a part of the move clap your hand and shout glory Hit your hand shout glory another time you ought to shake your neighbor's hand and ask them what kind of church is this oh yeah you didn't ask nobody shake somebody's hand and ask them what kind of church is this I don't know about y'all but, but when I want every time I come to church I want God to move I want to come and just leave the same way that I can. Anybody in here want to leave better? Anybody in here want to leave with more peace? Anybody in here want to leave with more joy? I didn't come to church. I didn't show up to leave out the same way that I can. Oh, but I want to leave. Turn around. I want God to spin me around and work some stuff out of me and bring some stuff to anybody in here came to have church clap your head and shout glory shout glory another time shake somebody else's hand and tell them I came to have church oh yes I did oh, the church is the place of hope oh yeah the place of hope because so many people in our world well I may as well break it down to you like this so many people in our city hey man are hopeless are you that right Ah, oh, that's what Paul said about us. He said that one time we were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Or in other words, we were alienated from the hope of God or from the will of God. We were without God. We had no hope. Um, then he picked it up in another place and said, if in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable anybody know some miserable people I see him just about every day miserable walking in misery because they don't know which way to turn because they don't know how to find that peace 
they don't know how to find that comfort even people in this neighborhood they don't know where to find it to be close to the church but to be far from the will of God I want you to know today this is the place of hope and if people on the outside will realize the hope on the inside it's going to take those of us on the inside to go to where they are and bring them the hope of the world this is the place of hope because this is where Jesus is and I want to let you know today let me pause for a station identification Jesus is the hope of the world it ain't in a social program it ain't in a 12 step program it ain't in a counseling session Jesus is the hope of the world can I get a witness in here he will pick you up I mean literally he will pick you up you may be down on the ground but when Jesus comes in he will pick you up can I get a witness in here he will turn you around and I mean literally he will change your direction clap your head and shout glory shout glory another time he will change your direction the church is the place of healing it is the place of deliverance and it is the place of power I want you to know today there were those on the outside who are trying to do it themselves trying to figure it out themselves and I know because every now and then I get in the situation and I try to figure it out myself what can I do to make things better what can I do to fix it every now and then I got to be reminded that you don't have to rely on yourself Philip you got the Holy Ghost power and because you got the power use the power that you have can I get a witness in here oh, that's a reminder to somebody in here who might be going through God told me to tell you stop trying to figure it out stop trying to work it out use the power that you have some of us don't use it enough can I get a witness in here some of us forget the authority that we have in the name of Jesus but I dare some of you to go back to work tomorrow and call on the name of Jesus in your workplace I dare you to call on his name and watch stuff begin to happen watch things begin to turn around watch God move clap your hand and shout glory <laughs> I believe, I believe, amen, that we don't realize, thank God, the kind of power that we have, amen, in the name of Jesus. But we've got to use that power. We have got to use that power. I said we have got to use, thank God, that power. Because this is where we got it. The church is where we took on the name of Jesus. And I've got to close now. Because my time has gotten away. But I came to tell somebody. Because I don't know about y'all. But I'm glad that one day God put me in contact with the church. And I'm going to witness. I said, I'm glad one day he thought of me enough to bring me to the church. Oh, yeah, I was born. Thank God to a same lifestyle. Can I get a witness in here? Clap your hand and see it. See it. 
See, yes, another time I was born into a saved family, born to a preacher, born to a sanctified mother, but it wasn't born. But I didn't get in the church by who my father was. I didn't get in the church because of who my mother was. One day I had to get to the church for myself. Can I get a witness? And I'm so glad that I did because I can say like the songwriter said ever since that wonderful day my soul has been satisfied you ought to shake somebody's hand and tell them and say neighbor y'all ain't telling nobody but say neighbor say I come on tell them in the old sanctified way say neighbor say I I'm glad to be in the church I'm glad I've been born again I'm glad I'm not what I used to be I'm glad he turned my life around I'm glad he fixed my mind I'm glad He fixed my heart I'm glad I am not What I used to be I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad To be in the church See ya Clap your hand and see ya Hallelujah glad to be in the church I'm glad I am the church you ought to be glad too glad I am the church because I have this assurance that the gates of hell shall not prevail against me so long as I remain a part of the church your problems as you know it can come to an end. Now, I'm not saying that you won't have any more problems. But being in the church puts your problems into perspective. Because you can benefit from your trials. You can benefit from your trouble. Some people, their problems consume them. That's why they wind up in the crazy house. Wind up on medication. Medication to regulate their mood. And then they got to get more medication to treat the side effects of the medication that regulates their mood. And then before you know it, you got, you're taking pills every day of the week. And you done forgot what the pills do. But when you are in the church, God can regulate your mood. Can I get a witness in here? I am a witness. And you will benefit from your problems. It doesn't mean that your problems are going to go away. Because everybody has trouble. Everybody has trouble. Regardless of whether or not you're saved. But what makes the difference is that God uses trouble to continue to make us to be more like himself it's a blessing being saved can i get a witness in here so many people look for the answer of life they look for the answer to their trouble and that's what the church is here for because Jesus is the answer. But just like that man at the gate of, of the temple, laid at that gate daily, never going in, so close to the temple, but yet so far from the will of God. And it wasn't until somebody from the church went to him 
and gave him Jesus. Peter and John, silver and gold have I none. I don't have no money to give you. I don't have the goods of this world to give you. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They didn't have what he wanted, but they had what he needed. And many times, you notice, he didn't lay at the temple <clears throat> and ask those that were walking by, pray for me that God would heal me. He asked for money. He thought he knew what he wanted, but he didn't know what he needed. And it took the church going to him to point out, this what you need. And once he got what he needed, the Bible says he rose up, leaping, walking, and praising. And you know where he went? He went right to church. Why? Because what he needed was in the church. And that's what you and I, that's our responsibility. We get in routines. We get in, com uh, in our comfort zones. We get in our uh, just normal mode of course of Sunday life and we forget oftentimes the real purpose why we are in the church, why we are the church. We have the responsibility to go to those that are close to the church but far from the will of God. We have the responsibility of to take Jesus to them. Can, I, can, can we say amen? That is our responsibility. God does not save us to be spectators. This salvation is not a spectator sport. You don't come to church and watch like you go to the game and watch. You see, that's the problem. I'm not, I'm not saying in our church, but that's the problem with church folk today. They go to church like they're going to the basketball game to be entertained. To they want to they wanna be consumers instead of producers and that's what God wants us to be he wants us to be producers producers of what producers of fruit what is the fruit the souls of men that's what God wants out of his church what kind of church is this you and I determine what the church will be as we line up in the will of God the church will be what we are I've known many churches that have established a rep reputation of being a church of fornication because the people get themselves involved in fornication and the word gets out. The church will be known for what you are. That's why the Bible says that we are written epistles, living epistles, read and known of all men. People will see what Jesus is by looking at you. Can I get a witness in here? People will only know the love of God if you reach out in the love of God. When people come to church, they won't say, uh, this is a loving church. They're not going to walk in and just, oh my God, just see love, love all on the building. There's no billboards that say this is a loving church. They will come to that conclusion when they come in contact with you. And they come in contact with you and you express the love of God. And then they will say, that's a loving church. Because I came in contact with the first lady. Or the church members just, they just hugged me and, and made me feel special. That's the way people ought to feel when they come to church. Is that right? They ought to feel special. I think it was Maya Angelou who said, if people don't remember what you said, they remember how you made them feel. And people, when they come to church, they ought to, we ought to make them feel special because they came to church. They didn't just come to any church. They came to God's church. And it takes courage. It takes courage to admit that you need to change. It takes courage. So we ought to celebrate the fact that you here, man. You, you in the right place. God love you. We're so glad that you're here. You're special in the sight of God. We're glad that you, God's got something for you. 
you gave him something this morning, he's going to give you something. That's how people need to feel, and it's going to start with us because we are the church. So what kind of church is this is a question for you. What kind of church is this or what kind of church will I be? What kind of member of God's church will I be? Will I be the kind that ignores? Will I be the kind that is disingenuous in my, uh, in, in my interaction with them? Will I say praise the Lord and shake the hand just because I, it's what you're supposed to do? Or will I be the kind of church that says, we're so glad that you're here. God's got something for you. That's the kind of church that God wants. And that is the only way the people on the outside will feel the love of God and bring them into the temple just like the disciples did with that lame man. Put your hands together and give God a praise this afternoon. And so today, if you're not part of that church, if you've been around,